Have you ever tried to apply a filter on a measure in Power BI? Something like this, let's just say that you have total sales and you wanna see that what is the total sales between 100 and $200 and you would wanna have an answer to that. So you're trying to apply a filter on the sales itself which is between 100 and $200. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do just that. All right, I'm in Power BI and I have already created a data model. Let's just kind of say a hello to the data model first and then we'll just take a look at the problem that we're working with. So two dimension tables, the products table and the calendar table, those are linked with my sales table and I have already created a total sales calculation. And the total sales calculation is very simple. All that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go in every single row of this particular table, trying to do a VLOOKUP for the price from the products table right here and then multiply that with the units which is right here and that is going to give me the total sales calculation. And on this particular measure, I would want to apply a filter. It's a measure and I would like to apply a filter on that. And before I start to do things, let's just visually create a mock output that what is it that we were trying to do and how is it gonna look like on the screen? So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to achieve a slicer on the page and the user is going to have two values to filter from. It'll have, let's say, the beginning value, let's just call it $100 and then the ending value, let's just call it a $200. So user can select these two starting and ending values. And then I should be able to see the sales value between $100 and $200. That's what I would wanna build. So there is obviously a filter on the sales between $100 and $200. Well, how do you do that? Now, even before you start to attempt to solve this question, there is a very, very big problem that you have to solve for, which is deciding the granularity of the calculation. Well, what do I mean by that? Now, let's just go ahead for a quick second and take a look at our sales table. So if I just go ahead and take a look at our sales table right here, you're gonna see that the sales table is at the granularity of transactions. You can see that 2nd January is duplicated, 3rd January is duplicated, so on and so forth. That means that you had two transactions here, you had two transactions here, so on and so forth. That filter that we just spoke about, which is let's say between $100 and $200, at what granularity do you want to filter between $100 and $200? is something that you need to decide on first before you start to do that calculation. Let me help you understand. So let's just say that, I'm trying to say that I want to filter for all the sales values per day, which were between $100 and $200. Now that per day is nothing but my granularity. So I don't really want to filter by every single transaction like this. I want to filter it per day. That means I want to have a table something like this. Let's just say that there is going to be day one, day two, day three, day four, and all the days of the month. You'll have all the days of the month. Then I would want to have the sales against that written right here. And then I want to pick up that, hey, if the sales is between 100 and 200, so let's just say the sales here was 100, the sales here was perhaps 50, the sales here was 125, and so on and so forth. So I want to pick up the two values, which is between 100 and 200, and these are the two values. So I want to filter like this. Now, to be able to do this calculation, what I need first is to define at what granularity do I want to apply this filter and then I'll be able to do this calculation. Now, once we have decided that, hey, let's just say that for instance, I wanna do this calculation on a per day basis. Now let's just go ahead and start to build our visual slicer and things like that. All right, to be able to build the slicer that we just discussed, which is where you'd have 100 here and you'd have a 200 here, we need to create a table. Now, remember that slicers can only be built off a table and in the table, you need to have all the values and we can then pick up 100 and 200. So I've already built the slicer. I'm gonna show you that, uh, how did I build the table behind the slicer? So you can see that we have a simple table called sales filter. And I said that I wanna generate rows from uh, from the value one till a value of 100,000. This can be very, very large as well and just creates numbers between one to 100,000. Now, using this particular table and the value column, I'm gonna create a filter. So I'm just gonna go back right here and add a slicer to my page. So add a visual and I'd like to add a slicer to my page. Let's just do that slicer. And in the slicer, I'm just gonna add that uh, sales filter right here. And that is going to be good to go. Now here is where I can pick up, let's say 100. And here is where I can, let's say pick up 200. And now the data is gonna be filtered. Now, the other thing that I would want to do is that I don't really wanna write value on the top. That's very vague. I wanna say, sales per day. So I can just click on this and I can go over to the format. In the format, in the slicer header, rather than writing a value, I can say sales per day filter. Now we can go ahead and start to write a measure. That measure is going to capture these two values, 100 and 200, and slice my sales and show me the value which were per day between 100 and 200 and what's the sum of that 
right here. All right, I made a measure. I'm going to call this as total sales filter within which I will start to declare my first variable, which is going to be the min sales. And the min sales is nothing but whatever minimum value that we have it in the slicer. And that is coming from the sales table, uh, filter table value column that is right here. Whichever is minimum uh, of the value selected, that's what it's going to pick up. I can then declare another variable called the max sales, similarly to just to pick up the max value, which is 200. Once I have the min and the max values, I then have to use these min and max values to be able to filter my data. Note that I said data. By data, I mean to say daily sales. So what I I'm going to do is I'm going to write the return statement here and I will first create a filtered table that is going to give me the values between the min and the max values. Now the table has to be at the granularity that we decided, which is going to be at the day level. So I'll say, hey, I use the values column just to pick up one single column from the calendar table. Now note that the calendar table date column is already a column which is at the granularity of the day. That means you would just have one, two, three, four unique dates right here. That's what you would have. Now against in this particular table, which is the one columnar table that I have created, I would want to perform a check and the check is going to be, hey, first find out the sales and then check is the sales between the min value, which is right here, or is it going to be between the max value or not? Is it like less than uh, the max value and greater than the min value or not? So simple check like that. So I'm going to say that, hey, here is my table and I would want to calculate the total sales and the total sales should be greater than equals to the min value, the min sales. And the second condition is going to be the total sales is going to be less than or equal to the max sales value. Now this particular filter is going to give me a table of the list of dates. So let's just say that we had the dates one, two, three, four, five, six. Some dates are going to qualify based on the conditions. Some dates are not going to qualify for some of the conditions. Now the dates that are going to qualify for the conditions only for those dates, I want to find the total sales. And that is what I want to display it right here. So this is just a filtered table to perform the calculation that I want to perform. So I can just go ahead and wrap this around in the calculate function. So I'll say, hey, I want to calculate total sales, which is right here. But the filter that I would like to apply on the sales calculation is nothing but this custom filter that I have created. Press enter and I'm going to drag this calculation to my visual. And that is nothing but my answer. Now, this 108 is the answer for all of those days in the year of 2011 in the region of Bangalore where per day the sales was between 100 and 200 dollars. Quick introduction in the video in case you're liking the video so far and you're wondering that how can I learn these skills of writing good DAX, good data modeling, the M language behind Power Query and all of the nuances of Power BI that makes it work. I have brilliant courses on Power BI, especially the Power Query part the DAX part, data modeling part, and the M language part. In the courses, I take you from a beginner level and take you to more advanced concepts. Try to explain you the logic of how things are working so that you feel confident in applying the learnings to even on your own data sets. Hundreds and hundreds of students have joined my courses and they have benefited a lot. In case you're interested, the link for the courses is going to be down in the description of the video. Let's get back to the video. All right, let's just take a look at another variation of the same problem, which is where again, I'm trying to slice my measure by a few conditions. Now take a look at this um, blank pivot table that I'm working with at the moment, just to give you an end picture as to what am I trying to get at. So I have the channel, uh, the channel is coming off from my sales table. We have three channels that, that we use to sell, affiliate channel, organic channel, and promotional channel. And we have two years worth of the data at the moment. So we have 2011 and 2012. Now here, what I'm trying to do is I want to kind of do a bucketing of the sales and I would want to find out that, hey, give me all the sales are, that are between a certain range, maybe zero to 500 or 500 to 1000 and 1000 to 2000, things like that. Now that is what I'm trying to do. And that bucketing of the sales, I would want to show it here. So let's say between zero to 500 and uh, how did that, how did that perform? And between 500 to let's say 1000, how did that perform? And so on and so forth. Now, again, we are kind of dealing with two problems. Earlier we were dealing with one problem. Now we are dealing with two problems here. Now at the moment, we need to define these buckets to be able to do this calculation. That's problem number one. And problem number two is that this buckets or the filtering of the sales is going to again be decided at the certain granularity of the table. So here is what I'm trying to say that if in any particular year, in any particular month, the sales are between zero to 500, then I would want to classify that in this particular bucket. Again, if in this particular year, 
And in this particular bucket, for any particular month, uh, the sales are between 500 and 1000, then I would want to classify that into second bucket. So the granularity in this problem that I'm defining to my calculation or my sales filtering measure is by the year and by the month. And unless I'm able to create a table like that, I would not be able to do this calculation. So let's just first attack the first problem, which is where we will have to create this, these buckets, and then we will come back and attack the granularity problem. To be able to place things in the axis of the chart, we would need to create a table, and the, in the table, we would need to define our ranges between zero to 500 and things like that. To be able to do that, I'm in the data tab, and in the table tools, I am gonna create a blank table, and I'm gonna call this table as sales, range filter. Let's just start to write some tax code for that. So I'm going to start using a formula called the data table formula. And the data table formula, I have the ability to define the column name. So my first column is going to be the range column. Then I define the type of the column. That means I'm going to input the string values there. Then I will decide what's the minimum. Then that's going to be an integer. What's the maximum range? That's going to be, again be an integer. Now, once you've defined as many columns and their data types as you would have, then in the next row, you start defining your rows or the input of the data. And that is nothing but my input of the data. You can see that um, the first curly brackets right here is to initiate the rows that you start to define the rows now. And every single curly bracket right here is going to be the a data of every single row. This is the data for the first row, the data for the second row, the data for the third row, so on and so forth. And every single row can, is going to contain the same three columnar data points. So this is going to be the string, which is nothing but is going to be the range. This is going to be again be an integer because that's the integer that we have defined. And it's going to fall in the min column and this is going to fall in the max column. So the data types match, this is a string and this is kind of good to go. I will close the formula in the end, press enter and I get a table like that. Now, take a look at the ranges that I have defined. So the range is between zero to 500, that's the first range, 500 to 2000, 2000 to 5000, 5000 to 10,000, so on and so forth. These range can be as customized as your data is, but for now, this is kind of good to go. Now, I'm gonna go back to my visual and I will start carrying that uh, column of the range that I have created in my visualization. So I will take that range column, put that right here and put that above the channel. And you can see that at the moment it is giving me an error because at the moment this particular table that we have created, which is uh, the range filter with the range and the min and the max values, this particular table is not really related to any other tables here or here. That's why there is an error on the relationship. Now, we don't worry about that. We will create a relationship using a formula, but let's just start writing our calculation. So to be able to initiate a calculation, I'm gonna copy the same calculation that I just wrote a while ago. I'm gonna control C on that calculation. All right, let's just start with creating a new measure called the sales band. And in that band, I will start to write my calculation. But at the moment, it's gonna be hard to work with this errored pivot table or the matrix visual. So I'm gonna quickly delete a few columns of it and then restore it back once I, our calculation is working. So I will get rid of the channel and I will get rid of the year and I just have all the ranges and this is what I'm gonna work with just to kind of show you how this looks. So back at my calculation, I'll start writing. The first two variables are going to be the lower value and the upper value and all that I'm trying to do is just trying to find the min of the, the range that I've created in the min column and the max of the range created in the max column. That means just pick up this value and pick up this value, pick up this value and pick up this value, pick up this value and this value. That's all that I'm trying to do. The next thing that I'm trying to do is define the granularity of this calculation, which is very, very important. Now, this particular calculation that I'm trying to build is going to be checking that is the sales of the year and the month in this particular range or not. If that isn't the range, then it will go ahead and calculate, otherwise it's not. So you have to define at what granularity do you want to apply the filter. Now, once this particular table, which is pretty much the same table that we created earlier, is created, then I can go ahead and I can wrap this around in the calculate function. And I can say, hey, why don't you show my total sales for this filter that I have created? And if it passes the filter, keep it. If it doesn't pass the filter, ignore it. We're kind of good to go. Now we drag this particular calculation off in my pivot table and we get a table like this. Sure enough, we can filter that by the year and by the channel. So I'm gonna get the year right here in the columns that were missing, that's nice. And I'm also gonna get the, ch uh, the channel right here, which comes in right here and I can expand that. Now I can say that in the affiliate channel, uh, for all the months of 2011, 
wherever the months was giving a sale between zero to five hundred dollars this is the total of that sales value you're also going to realize that the totals are screwed up for whatever reason this is not really the right total eight thousand cannot be the right total and that's looking like screwed up so in case you want to learn how to fix the totals watch the video that comes up next on the screen